No way. No hey, way. What is up, y'all? Welcome to Thirsty Thursday. It is Thirsty Thursday. Good not too many of the Thirsty Thursdays left. I was left. just going to say, that there's not many Thirsty Thursdays left here, man. It's not. We were just talking about uh, eventuality of uh, a yeah. new Sunday. What are we going to call it? Sunday? Sipping Sundays? Sipping I don't Sundays? Know. I, I don't know. I don't Maybe know. We'll we should put out. that up for a vote. Maybe we, there's more mm -hmm. creative minds out there out there than there are right here. <laughs> uh, that's for sure that's for yeah. sure too wow so let's let's take a Without quick a look doubt. and see who we got going on people hopefully you can see us and hear us fine let's start with the beginning brad murphy brad. yes hey, and put your put, put, put that I local that time where you are too that'd yeah, be kind of cool that'd be cool that's what i'm gonna see because i know we've got at least 12 hours off we got six hours off anyway go ahead that's crazy it's around the world I mean, yeah that's, I love stuff it. for work josh you know what's gonna be amazing Francois. speaking of sunday is how to see even more of that, I think. Yeah, you know, I hope, yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Sorry. So, Francois. Francois. Merci, Kevin. Oh, all right. Good evening to you. Avar yeah. 16. That's a good start. Yeah. Nothing yeah, wrong with it. A new member, it looks like, too. Yep. Kevin, welcome to school. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome to our membership there. Uh, Ashley B. coming in from Houston. Houston. I hope you got some power. Yeah, no kidding. Hope you keep them warm down there. Not James. used to that. Bobby J. J. Bobby J's on. He's talking about some stuff tonight, maybe. We're going to talk about that with Dr. Scotch, hopefully. Yep. Yeah. Green That's Valley Garvin. from Arkansas. Green Garvin. I Garvin's burned the whole state of Arkansas down once in high school. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. James. Good, James. Stuff. James. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. The Blockling. The Blockling. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Rogers. There can only be one. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, oh, I do. Yeah. We'll, we'll get wait, into it later. Wait. Chris Mark Bill, G. Tom Mars here? That's weird. Yeah, yeah. Breeze Terrific uh, lineup on the bar. Yeah, so, we got a few bottles here. When I see Mark, yeah, it makes me want to ask, did everybody uh, have a good Fat Tuesday and Ash Wednesday and all that stuff? It was kind I of know a quiet one, one, right? Yeah. It, was, it was a little too snowy for all yeah. that. Yeah. 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 It's all right. right. So we got some time to come in, uh, Andrew. Did you get ask Ash? No. So we got 9 p.m. We've got, what? Here we go. 9 p.m. Uh, 4.02 a.m. 4, 4 p.m. on Friday here. Go up a little bit. Uh, Chris Mills is 4 p.m. on Friday. Where in the devil? Wow, that's like... I don't know where that is. 4 p.m. on Friday. <laughs> wow, it's I'm across confused. the time zone. Yeah, he's he's like uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> where do I sign up for that? Yeah, man. Stephen Rogers is in the house. Good to see you. Arthur. James and Garvin are on the same time. Good evening, Wesley. I don't even know. I don't even know. We got a few people. That's good to see you all. Right there, Thanks for hanging show, with us tonight. We got a show lined up. Um, We're busy. Hopefully, you guys caught the, uh, the uh, this week's review. It was a, another four dummies series. Pretty cool video. I actually learned a little bit watching it myself. To be honest with you, I, I, I'm a little bit disappointed in some of the information you gave. But we'll get into that when you give us the rundown. <laughs> Not um, that you do bad. No, I'm <laughs> no, 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 sorry was to see the information. I, I mean, I was just really kind of saddened to find out that they're discontinuing the twelve. I'm like, I, I think okay. it's a it's a process, mm -hmm. and, and I won't be surprised when a lot of other distilleries have to do oh it gosh. also, <laughs> especially the ones that sell a lot of product because you just, I mean. 12 years is a long time to wait. I know, you know? but how so, long has that Glenlivet 12 been on the... I, I forever. Mean, years it's been someone's daily drinker, you yep. know? Since before I was born, probably. Yep. I, it, it's just, I don't know. It's kind of sad to see a, a staple in a lineup. I mean, it, it, was, it was fun doing a little research on the distillery and uh, just the, the... A lot of those distilleries, when they first started, it's like one guy... And then when he passes away, it kind of goes out of the family, and it ends up in like a a, a company yeah, holding, it. Yeah. right? And this one was one that kind of stayed with the family for a, a little bit more of an extended period of time. Um, so I mean, that was kind of interesting that you know the yeah. family was a little more involved in it. Um, I mean, they even had uh, one of the Winchester series was distilled by you know one of his direct descendants, yep. one of George's direct descendants. So that's actually pretty cool, but. Uh, you know, I mean, it's a it's been around a long time. Um, it's interesting because we've done a few, um, and there was a few more that that uh, we picked up that we'll be doing reviews on. I think. Right. Uh, and you and I tried one uh, that was very good. Really I, good. I, won't say I which was one surprised. Was. <laughs> uh, but it, it was it was, was very good. Uh, so I mean, I think that they really do have something for kind of everybody's price range and everybody's kind of palate. Like there is something in that range that you can find that you would enjoy. Um, so, you know, I think that it's definitely worth exploring. It is a little bit, like there's some that I don't necessarily 
Yeah, I wouldn't say I don't care for them, but they're like a little the founders too. Founders Reserve. You know, yeah, the Founders mm -hmm. Reserve was a little not great, but you know, some of the <laughs> stuff that's uh, you know, well, and I, I don't say that I didn't like like the Enigma and the Code series. I thought that that was an interesting. It's a marketing thing, right? Yeah. But what they were trying to do was kind of an interesting thing, you know. I mean, they're basically giving you a blind tasting and letting you explore it and figure it out kind of yeah. on your own. That's all marketing. <laughs> but but it seems like a hundred dollars to figure it out. On That's your exactly right? what I was getting ready to say. Or you just don't read the tasting notes and taste the thirty dollar bottle. Oh yeah, that's a blind right. taste. Um, well, you, Mark and I had a glass of that at one of the restaurants one night. Yeah. What was it the name? I think it was the it was the name, name, yeah. And it was pricey for the glass. It, and well, we, we, were, we tasted it and we're like not worth the it. It was squeeze. over a hundred bucks for the bottle. Yeah. So yep. You know, they weren't cheap, but, yeah. uh, but you anyway. know, I, I think all in all, you know, the company's been around a long time. They've got a lot of stuff out there. Um, so I, I think that it's probably worth checking out at least a few oh, of them. Oh, for sure. Like you're going to see them. You know, They're a Glenn foundation. Livet's everywhere. Right. Yeah. So I, I think that it, it was it was a fun video to do just to touch on that distillery. Did they say if the 12 is going to be replaced by anything? Well, the Founders Reserve is the... In line is the is there, is there bottom is level? there NAS yeah whatever that level. Founder reserve is not a replacement I no I don't know so. not a good no. replacement so this one that you've got on the bar though wasn't in the lineup no and you know it's funny because <laughs> stuff gets lost on the bar right <laughs> yeah I, I mean I'm starting to know that feeling <laughs> here, here's the thing I I mean yours is fairly well organized and stuff kind of stays where it is my bar with the four guys coming over was like just stuff gets shuffled around and thrown <laughs> everywhere and oh, you know yeah. and now it's like I've got to bring stuff over so I completely forgot when we were getting ready to do the Glen Limit video Drew and I were like ah, I I, didn't, I think I had maybe a couple of bottles and uh, so he's like you don't have any more I thought we had another one over there no nah, I don't think so and so tonight I was looking around for the stuff that we're doing tonight and was like hey there's a bottle of Glen Limit how's <laughs> <laughs> this here right. Uh, nice. But this is a single cask edition Glenlivet. Um, it's a Bob special. It's a it's a Bob special. It this is, is a, a 70 special. centiliter bottle, so uh, European. It's 58.6 uh, ABV. It was distilled in '98, I guess. It was bottled. Yeah, in, Bob H is saying, "Is that my ladder foot?" Bottled yeah, in it 2014. Is, Bob <laughs> <laughs> One ladder foot. What are you talking about? <laughs> and see, it's still half a bottle. So if you can get over here, so, you can have some more of it. So I'm having a, a glass of that, and Drew's got one as well. I do. Uh, it's good. It's good. So it, it is tasty, and so I, I think that there's a lot of, <laughs> of things at this distillery that are worth exploring. Hi, you Lana. Know, I, I, so doing the editing, I always love doing the Four Dummies series. It's a lot of work, um, but I learned so much. Like you did a lot of research into it. And then I actually did a pretty cool, I did a Patreon uh, behind the scenes video. Yes, right. Week, which was actually which was really fun. Yeah, yeah, so I, I showed the editing for it. And it was, it was a good hour long video. And I didn't even get a chance to really get into all the details of the history. But once I did, I was like, holy crap, the Winchester guns, the, the history of how, you know, 1700s when this started, this is an old distillery. Yeah. Yeah, George's dad was the one who started right. it. Right. So it's pretty cool when you go through all this stuff. That's one of the cool things I like about Scotch in general. It's just if you spend time, and I'm sure bourbon, rums, they all have it. But what I love about Scotch is just it's a cool history over there. Mm -hmm. So a, a lot of it repeats. I mean, it, yeah. it, you Mop can balls. predict some of that. It built and burned, burned, it built right. and well, burned, it mothballed. My, my favorite part about researching the history was just like reading between the lines of what George had to do to keep people from like mm -hmm. wrecking yeah. his distillery after he signed up like that wasn't a small deal you yeah. know the more you read about Strong. it like the smugglers and the illicit the distillers day. back then i mean think <laughs> think prohibition in the united states <laughs> right. so like these guys is big money and so you know the reason that that law got put into place was because the rich guys wanted their cut right right they i mean that's in. really what it came down to was taxes so they wanted to get paid for what these guys were doing and so when george went and signed up for that he was, it was a rock and a hard place, man. I mean, his landlord's the guy who got that thing passed. He wants to get paid. Right. He's going to send his boys around and say, hey, you need to head on down and sign those papers, right? <laughs> but the hills are full of people that are, you know, not exactly, you know, sympathetic to his cause. because no, they're illegally so, making it, and they want to keep making it, and they want to keep making yeah. money. So how big of a badass do you have to be to walk around and say, mm, you can go burn his still down, but... 
Not mine. You, you can, can hear him clanking under the neck. Say, say, say hello <laughs> to one and two. <laughs> boom, boom. I got one shot each. Right. They're very Clint Eastwoody, yeah. right? Like uh, like old school Clint Eastwood. You hear that what? clank, clank under my kilt? What are you looking at? You know what I mean? Dying ain't much of a living, boy. <laughs> man, we could go on for an hour oh, on this topic. Man. Come on, let's go. So uh, anyway, I mean, it, it was fun doing. It's always fun. It was good. Sitting down I with a specific it. distillery and kind of going through their lineup and. And learning a little bit about the history, so it was key fun. takeaway is probably the twelve. I think I think is the biggest one. And then the, we've got a lot of comments on the Nadora range. Yeah, lots of good comments on about how yep. good that is. People so. have been talking about it since before before we even did this. Yes. I mean, I heard that before. And the, the sixteen specifically, the Nadora, I yep. think is what I'm hearing the most of. But now the, the other one is <laughs> pretty good. So I oh, oh we got a I'm like super Mother? chat. Oh Tom R. Tom, thank R. you, sir. You Tom get R. R. You know Ding. what, Tom? Thank you. But uh, Tom did have a question wrong. as we were, yeah. It is, um, Tom had a question while you were talking, though. He wants to know where you're at on the uh, the blind. Mm-hmm. The oh, blind challenge. We're waiting to get that equipment down to my here. bar. Yeah, so everything is, um, every, all the equipment to shoot down at Sean's bar is What's ready, but we kind of got what? dumped on with a lot of snow, and nobody no, wants to. We're not wheeling that down. <laughs> no, You're going to have to wait a couple days. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm actually ready to shoot it. Um, it's I mean, just... This blind? Yep, that it's just line. getting all of the uh, equipment down there because I want to shoot it at my bar. Um, so that'll hopefully, I'm hoping the to shoot that. The snow kind of messed us up. We were going to be at your house maybe, this week. But, yeah. Maybe early next week, mid next week, yep. I'd like to do it. Um, so, you know, as soon as I get it shot, I'll at least post out that I did it. He's been training with Andrew's uh, aroma kit. What is that? Don't you have one of those? Yep, smelling, smelling, smelling different aromas. Yep, so he's... he's Kick it in. You know, Rocky we're playing Eye of the Tiger do for do him. Do he's do great. Do. <laughs> but so, to wrap up Glenn Livett for dummies, put a, a point on it. What's the next for dummies? Series? I don't know. We Maybe you guys can tell us. What do you guys... You know what I would like, like to do? Is Highland Park for dummies. That was what I was... That's, that was my next That's going to be an undertaking. Right? It'd be like three hour series, I but know. it'd be cool. <laughs> I, be I want to do it just so I know what they're I was doing. just going to say, you know what? Maybe it's worth it just because so I've confusing. been so damn confused over Highland Park for the past two years. I'm sure, it's probably yeah. good. You one. definitely have to. Not only do you have to date the, the video, you have to date the video like to the day. Right. Yeah. On this day, yeah. this is their lineup. Right. Because it could change. It, it does. It does. I guess that, yeah. that if you're a, if you're a blender at, at within the distillery, it's a great opportunity because you, what do you, hey Joe, what do you want to make today? Let's try this. Yeah. I, they just need to clean things up. But you know what? We'll do it. We'll, I say that that's yeah. a good idea. I, we'll see. People, that'd be fun. Others, you know. I mean, obviously, we could do like a Balvini because that's a very 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 well. We have it. So what way. have we done? We've done McAllen. We've done. Walker, Glenn, John Walker, Johnny Walker. We've done Glenbo. We've done Glenn Levitt, McAllen, McAllen. I think. Did so we do that's one more? It. No, that's it. So we've done Space Sides and Highlands. Wait, did you say Glenn? You did. Yeah. So we haven't done anything on any other regions yet. Yeah. Well, so that's a question. Do you do something like, like Kilhoman that has that was going to be a million one, bottles? Say. That would be cool. Or do you do, do Brucolati that? They got a lot of different kind of things with Lafroy, Lagavulin. Uh, yeah, I was going to be the big ones. Well, Lagavulin doesn't have enough. Doesn't have a lot. No, though. they got eight, eleven, and 12. those aren't even core. And, and, I mean, Kerchus, yeah. it, it has to be something. And I know we're kind of on tangent here, but it's, it has to be yeah. something that you're going to see multiples in the uh, liquor store. <laughs> Compass box, Glen Dron Glen hey. Dronick. Oh yeah, show him, Glen Dronick. He paid his money. The the uh, Glen Livet Nadura Sherry. He wants to know what bottle it was? No, he, he had says, it. He, it was he very says we, we, need we need to get a bottle. Oh, oh. got it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> so, yes. Chris, Chris, thank you, sir. That's a great agreed. idea. That's How's a great that? idea. You mean Look. this one right here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's on the list. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's on the list. actually on, on the list to be reviewed. Mm -hmm. I mean, we may have a sip tonight. depends on how we do. Don't mind if I do. All right, let's move on. All so right. we're going to be low on time here because we got a lot to do go through. Do you want to go through we'll see cold situations going. first or you want to do... Yeah, I, let, let's do that and then we can just do this the rest of the time. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and go. <laughs> so if you're like in the most of the world right now, you know it's been cold. Well, Could you, pour some more water? Uh, you know, the interesting thing was, and we'll have, well, I want, there's something I want to bring Dr. Scotch in for, but um, if Thank you look you, at the sir. Discord channel... There, there's a lot of discussion about. So if my if my, um, if my whiskey was just recently shipped and it comes to me 
and it's and really it's sitting, cold. And it's been sitting in my porch and it's zero degrees out. Is it now chill filtered? Well, no, but <laughs> technically it's not chill filtered. If, if, but chill, if we ever, if we're ready to do Dr. Call Dr. Scotch in, we um, are. Let me get this set up. I'm almost done. <laughs> okay. I'm multitasking here. You know, I, I've got some questions. Actually, wait. For, for the for the doc on the flip side of that then because I've had some experiences you know ordering a lot of whiskey online and getting shipped to me so get that guy in here with his white let's bring Dr. Scotch let's do that alright right. going on you just missed andrew i did he was <laughs> well he saw i, I crossed in the, in the green room he, he was he's sitting out there so i hear that shipping scotch at this time of year is an inter interesting experience it can be okay because what you can have is you can have your non-chill filtered whiskey come be sitting on your porch at freezing degrees zero degrees 10 degrees fahrenheit and there's a question that was Circulating on Discord, does this mean my new whiskey is now chill filtered? Ooh, I mean, and Drew is working on a graphic here. I don't know when he wants to put it up. There it is. This was a graphic from who was this? Bobby J. Bobby J. So he had a couple of bottles that were sitting outside. Let's go Sean. And and you can see the uh, Kragalaki, is that what it is? Yep. It, 13 is clearly cloudy. Um, and that's exactly what'll happen. And that's exactly what distillers do to chill filter a whiskey, is they bring it down to that freezer temperature to do that. Now, but then they put it through a filter. Then they put it through a filter. So if you don't filter that and you bring it back to room temperature, it'll all go back. It, most of it should go back into solution. Which is what happened here. It, it may or may not, but it, it should all go back into solution. Huh. But the key is, so if you really want to know, this is a perfect example. and that, I'm glad he brought that up. You can actually do a test on your own to determine if you could taste chill filtered whiskey or not. So what you do, well, let me back up. So what that chill filtering is designed to do, it removes fatty acids, it removes proteins, and it'll remove some long chain esters out of the whiskey. Now the fatty acids and the proteins are all about mouthfeel. It gives you a little creaminess, a little oiliness, a little, those kind of things. The esters can add some like high fruit notes and bananas and stuff like that, but Generally, yeah. you like those? <laughs> What's the difference between long chain esters and short chain esters? Well, short, <laughs> short chain esters don't have as much flavor and influence. So that's okay. A, I just need to know. Where's your notes? Yeah, they're they're also not it. as likely to come out of solution and chill filter. So there's there's always esters in whiskey. So anyway. okay. So what I what I yes. What, what's an ester? <laughs> it's a it's a She's really compound mean. that had no. flavor. <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a name from the 20s that is really common among grandparents. Fair enough. So, uh, so he, anyway, so what that does is it's generally a mouthfeel thing, and there have been studies back and forth that you really can't taste the difference. So what you want to do is you want to take some whiskey that you know has been non-chill filtered. So it's going to be a 50, 60 proof, something like that. Um, and what you do is you, you take two samples of it and pull them apart. And one of them, you take a coffee filter, and you pour it through the coffee filter at room temperature. So if there's any flavors that are picked up from the coffee filter, that will be an example, that'll be your control. And then you take a, that other sample, throw it in your freezer. Let it freeze down as cold as it'll go, leave it there for four hours or more. And then you take that and pour it through a different coffee filter. And what you'll effectively do is you will chill filter that whiskey. And you'll all that haze that you have in there will most likely, in most cases, get caught in that filter. Right. Now it's not as probably as tight a filter as you would use in a, in a distillery. Yep. But it will it will pull a lot of that filtration out, especially if you leave it in the freezer for like a couple of days and let it all settle to the bottom and then pour it, then it's really gonna filter it all out. So I guess the big question is if you buy a bottle, leave it in the cold because it's cold as hell outside, mm -hmm. and you leave it for a couple of days on the car and you bring it in and you're like, oh man, no. is it ruined? You have not ruined it, no. Because okay. as soon as you warm it up it'll, and, you, and you tip the bottle, it'll all come back in a solution. But why, so, why 
chill filter, why don't you chill filter at 56% ABV? Because if you, well, why don't you? Because you don't need to. It, 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 number one, you have to use the energy to cool it down. Number two, you got to go through filter plates <clears> and all, that, all the expense of the filters to pull all that stuff out. But, well, no, but so I, 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 I'm asking the, the questions for, for the audience. So you say mm -hmm. you don't need to. Well, why do you need to under 46%? Well, because if you if it's under forty six percent and you go into a cold room, your bottle will be cloudy, and that's ugly. Okay, it's more aesthetics than it's anything all, else. It's almost nine, probably ninety ninety five percent aesthetic. Okay, so now let me flip the script. We're talking about cold. What about on the opposite side of it? Um, I, I've had bottles where I've ordered them. They've shown up in the summer. They're on the front porch, or I've seen pictures from subscribers that are in their mailbox and they get it and. You know, when a bottle's brand new, it's filled to about right here, but it's been sitting out in their mailbox in 90 degree weather all day, and the liquor's up to here. I mean, it's, it's, they're like, holy cow, let it sit for four or five hours in their house, Room temperature. and you know, it comes back down. Exactly. What's going on? Is that just pressure in the bottle, or is that affecting the whiskey? Is there anything going so, on chemically? Going on, no, there's nothing going on. Well, I'll back up a little bit. Number one, what's happening there is the coefficient of thermal expansion of a liquid. So as you heat up a liquid, it'll expand. <laughs> so <laughs> so if, you, if you take up any, any liquid and you heat it up, it'll expand the volume. So it'll become okay. less dense and it'll fill the bottle up more. So in a hot, in a hot um, environment, that liquid expands. And what it'll actually do is it'll pressure it up. And, and in some cases, it'll actually push, push some of the headspace of the bottle out and can break. Pop that cork. It or, can pop, right, pop the cork out. I've, who, if anybody's left a bottle of wine in their car, like, in a hot summer day, oftentimes they come back and the, whole, the cork's popped out and it's blowing all over the car. So that, that's the same kind of scenario. Fine. That, the beauty of these, sometimes they've got seals on them to help hold that cap on really tight. But, the, but the, the beauty of a real cork is it will breathe a little bit and let some of that gas out. And yeah, but not with like in. these where they're sealed. Yeah, where they're all sealed super yeah. tight. Yeah. All right. Interesting. But, but typically that shouldn't greatly affect the whiskey unless it's a really long time because the heat does induce oxidation so it can I promote see. some of that before it gets so there it, there could be concern if you leave it out there too yeah long. it's really it this is really best kept it between 65 fahrenheit and 80 85 fahrenheit it's probably the I mean, best to me it. it's it's like any other like you wouldn't want your wine or anything else like that to <laughs> go through wide swings in temperature exactly um and you know once in a while not the end of the world not I mean, a big deal. at the restaurant, you know, when they deliver wine, liquor, beer, well, beer's already cold, but the mm -hmm. wine and the liquor, I mean, it's in a it's in a box truck. Right. They're not climate controlled. No. no. You know, so I mean they, they roll it out, it's on the road all day, and you know, when they roll it in, it's you know, the red wines are cold, the liquor is cold, in the summer it's hot. So Yeah, a lot of the lot of the food food and beverage is, is stored at what they call warehouse temperature. Which is between three degrees Celsius and forty degrees Celsius. That's <clears throat> that's just by definition warehouse huge, temperature. Right? So that's basically 35, 40, or 38 Fahrenheit to 105, 110 Fahrenheit. That that is an allowable storage temperature for most food, most non-perishable food stuffs. Which I can tell you, sitting on the back of a UPS truck, it can get hot because yeah, I've had yeah. it. I've literally had it handed to me it's by hot. the UPS, and I run upstairs to my office, pull out a knife, and I and I get it, and you know that bottle's. So I'm like, oh man, this thing's ready to pop. Mm -hmm. It can be. Yep. Let me yeah, save man. you, little guy. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Daddy's here, right? <laughs> so try to chill filter. I'd like. I'd be really interested if anybody would like to uh, give us some information. I, if I'd had time, I would have been able to uh, maybe have a little taste test right here of some chill filtered whiskey. We could have done. Maybe some other time. Maybe maybe more specific Dr. Scotch episode. Be kind of cool to do that. Actually, Actually freeze one and get yeah. it prepped and use some coffee. Use some White Walker. And see what freeze happens. it and see. Oh, sorry. Start and chill filter. No, man. Ain't going to happen. Not doing it. At least it nope. tells Not. you on the bottle when it's cold. Now. It tells you. <laughs> but it's so cool it, thing it, about it, that bottle. But if you get a bottle now and it's cold and it's cloudy when you give it, bring it in the house, warm don't, it up. Don't worry. Give about it a little it. it's all twist. Good. It'll all be fine. It's all good. Don't yep. put it on your stove or anything. Just let it come up naturally. Correct. Very all good, right, Dr. So, Sketch. Hey, go get Andrew. We got some whiskey to drink. Get her. All right. <laughs> See you. See you. Cheers. Hey.
Uh-oh, what What's happened? What's that on that? The web server. Web server's down. Um, so uh, it, <laughs> That's weird. Can you read it? What happened? The web servers are turning an issue. I don't know. That's interesting. Are we still live? I think so. During website streamlabs.com. Hmm. Yeah, keep going. That's All fine. Right. I, so, I, it, I uh, you know, you, do you guys realize that that spread in the green room is really fantastic? Really? I mean, it's like it, you got uh, charcuterie boards in there. All and caviar. It's, and... Man, it's great. <laughs> you can bring some of that back. No kidding. Really? Yeah, green man. Room. We don't ever get. We could get. I'm. I'm surprised. Zebra hunter more. never wants to come out. <laughs> <laughs> if we had more guests, I'd, I'm not. Surpri I'm surprised we don't have more guests. Sitting there with the bunker that. commander, the whole show, getting drunk and eating caviar. <laughs> Kira, can you guys see the text on our screen? If it's, if not, then we're, I'm going to ignore it. But it's some weird text on our screen. Is cloud kind of burned is in. currently? I don't know. I don't Tom know. R, answer the question. If you can see oh. text on the screen. More super chats make that text go away. <laughs> ah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah, I wanted I to show something off. From Look, Andrew brought these over no. for us. Uh, uh, he had a friend oh, yeah. that made these. I wanted to show these off and see what you all think about them. But check these yeah, posters so out, man. Go to the camera and see if we can see those. you got to get real close, probably. Yeah, I'll get a little yep. closer. And, and I so I have a friend, Mark Ann. He's, he's occasionally on here that, um, that used a That's CNC cool. machine to make there these coasters out of oak, uh, maple, and walnut woods. So each each of those cool. was was cut out and then and then and layered in there in, a, in an inlay. Amazing piece of work there. Love them. Um, <laughs> those are really cool. I'm digging them, man. I'm and, digging and they were a gift, so I'm afraid to ask how much it would cost if we wanted to buy a bunch of them because that seems like an awful lot of work. It's beautifully done. I mean, they're all smooth. It looks like one piece of wood, but they're different colors on it. Oh, it's an alert box. It's an alert box. The alert box. For Molly is messed up for stream. That's what it is. Uh, no. oh, let's turn that off. So we'll have right. to acknowledge the super chats manually. No, it's all right. All right, all right at least we, we figured it out. Well, we know. We'll have to wait for the. Got relief. Well, I'll, I'll give the text. Molly's going to do that. So. Okay. That's all right. PO'd. All right. So we do have a cool, cool coasters. Thanks for bringing them over, man. I, I, we need to talk to that guy. But um, what's the main topic now? What are we talking about tonight, guys? Terror. Terror. Is that what we're talking about? Terror. Terroir. We can screw this up. Come on, hang on. Yeah, we can. <laughs> Terroir. We can totally screw it up. Terroir. So, we've done this before. Oh, yeah. We've, we've talked, talked about, about this. it a few times. There, there's been, the whiskey world is afire with whether or not this is a real thing. Yeah. Right? And they're trying to prove it. And, and the, the people that say that it is not, their whole argument has been centered around the, there's no science behind it. We don't know what you're talking about, basically. Because, you know... Back when the French figured it out hundreds of years ago, a lot of science behind there it. There was a lot of it. <laughs> but, uh, so it turns out that there is science behind it now. Andrew, do you want to... Uh, well, a little bit. Do you want to kind of... Talk They're working through? on it. There's a published paper. There is a published that. paper. If you go to Waterford Distillery, they're an Irish whiskey distillery, they have funded a, um, a study uh, exploring terroir. And so what they've done is they took... Um, Different varieties of um, malt. Of barley. And, uh, barley, yeah. I'm sorry, bar barley, yeah. Barley. And um, from different years, different locations, and different varieties of, of barley. And they've tried to control all the other factors. And they, they did some analysis making distillate out of those barleys. Under laboratory conditions. Under laboratory conditions. Right. So it's the same still, it's the same amount of mash, it's the same yeast, it's the same everything to try and normalize. And then they distilled those and, and that run a, um, an analysis on the new make. So they're eliminating all the barrel influence. This is only the true terroir of the grain. Right. It's not, it's not including the terroir of where you age it or any of that kind of stuff. So Which is a lot more like wine with, with right. the grape, right? It is, it is. And it's an interesting study. So it, it's, I think, scientifically, it's set up very strong. It's a great article. The one thing that I find really interesting is they, they take the, the sample of, of new make, and they put it in a vial, and they run it through a gas chromatograph. Right. And, and they use, um, and what this does is they Dr. even talk Dr. about, I don't know. <laughs> they, they talk about the whole process of how they, they sample it, and it runs through the gas chromatograph, and then, at the end of the gas chromatograph, they split the stream. One goes into an analyzer to be able to detect um, what the mass of the material is coming out. The other one goes to a guy's nose. I know this little spritzer is like. <laughs> so he's sniffing for it. Uh, smells like something. He's sniffing the output of the gas chromatograph. 
And, and what they're able to, they well, were able to do. She had an image of that. Well, and the, the thing that's interesting is they, they were really intent about making sure the people that were nosing that, that were pie trained. were well trained. Yeah. They were calibrated against each other. They were calibrated you know, against uh, known smells. I mean, they, it, they've done a great job on that. But it still seems weird. It's like one's going to a, a million dollar mass spec machine and one guy's sitting there with a the nose. Bring in the nose. Bring in the nose. <laughs> so I, got I am the here. Nose. Give me my output. And, and, and <laughs> so they were able to detect differences in the new make whiskey on nose and chemical compounds between the different uh, brands or the different varieties. Um, I think the biggest influence was the, um, the territory and the year. Because weather and the the uh, um, ground that they're grown in really do have an effect. Right. The question, though, and they've got a, they've got another study going, I think, in the next year, that's due to publish in, in next year, about whether it really affects the flavor. So there are some nose comp some some okay. nosing compounds that you can detect. There's some nosing differences you can detect, but they are subtle, and there's only like eight. Eight, I think it was eight or five, five to eight compounds that they could actually tell a difference between all these varieties and years. So it, it, it is a subtle difference, but it is scientifically is it enough detectable. To say that it's that it, it's terroir. It is scientifically detectable. So my my takeaway from the article was yes, like of course there's going to be. And they were talking about the the chemical compounds in the soil. You know, one one sample had right. more manganese in it than the other sample, yep. or copper, or whatever. And some of that stuff is going to go through, of course. Um, and so you're going to end up with slightly different variations, I would think. But the part that I'm not sure about is, so you have this new make spirit. And it's got slightly subtle variations, mm -hmm. but now you're going to throw it in an oak barrel for the next 20 years. <laughs> exactly. And so how much of that is left at the end of the process? And I'm not saying that there's not nothing, but, I mean, is it enough to really... Say there is an existence you know, of this. I mean, there's so many other things involved. There, there were a few compounds that were pretty noticeably different. I mean, different. you had to have some serious sensitivity. Well, and, and the thing is, so what they're picking, I think that what, what I found... Thanks, Bobby J. Appreciate the, it, buddy. Bobby J. Hey, Bobby J. Bobby. Thank you. No problem. Thank um, you. A, a lot of what they were detecting were differences in the, in the esters that we were talking about earlier. The, the bananas, the uh, pears, the apples, those flavors that are coming out in the new make. You do detect a lot of those in, like, in any whiskey. You detect the apple. You get a lot of pears and those kind of things. And so I think that is maybe a, a fairly dominant new make flavor that carries through. But you do also get ester extraction from a barrel. So that's the case of I don't know if, if it would cover that up or not. I, I think the part to me, you know, when you're talking about wine, it's a very simple process. Yes. You know? And you're, so you're using the grapes from that year. There's definitely going to be different, you know, water content, you know, weather, soil conditions, all of those things are going to play into it. And then you're taking the juice straight from there. It's going into a bottle, which is non-reactive. And yep. so it really is more about what you put in initially. Whereas whiskey, I'm not entirely, like there's so many other things that go into it. You know, is it a wooden washback? You know, what kind of yeast did they use? How tall was the still? You know, yeah. well, uh, where do they make their cuts? And, and for beers are the same way. Beers can be highly influenced by terroir, because the same way wines are. Because you're taking that, that raw pro food product and tasting it, as right. opposed to taking a raw product and then distilling out the high boilers mm -hmm. and all the, right. the heavier and flavor then, compounds and, that. and then putting that in a barrel. So... That's where terroir, terroir definitely affects wine, and it definitely affects um, beer. So I, I've always thought that there's probably so, at least some influence on where the grain is made. There has to be, yeah. right? I was same, same with the water, right? Like, whatever's in the water that you're using... Well, they all bring be, a lot their water source. There's going to be a little something that comes through, the mineral content or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's going to lend something to your whiskey. But, you know, all of these components have to come together... 15 years from now to make that it's whiskey tough. taste it's the tough, way it yes. So, 
Where does this lead us in the conversation of, of regions? I mean, terroir is about where it's from. Where it's from. Right? right. So we all know, or maybe we don't, um, Scotch has five regions, five according regions. to SWA. Right. SWA. Right? That's not this. SWA says there's five. Now, anyone else out there that says there's six can, you know, it, sometimes people yep. refer to the islands as a sixth region. Technically, from the SWA, they are part of Highlands. Correct. correct. Yes. So, the so you, what are they? So you have you have the okay. island. We had Speyside, the Highlands, the Lowlands, Isla, and Campbelltown, and Campbelltown, Campbelltown, and the Willie. Um, <laughs> technically, uh, <laughs> you the say the Willie. The Willie. Say the Willie. The, technically, if you look at the map, are you sharing that? It's I'm not. A, okay. But. If you look at the map, Speyside is technically a subregion of Highland, although the SWA recognizes it as its own region because there's so a many million million yeah, There's like there. <laughs> more, there's as many distilleries in Speyside as there is in all of Scotland. All of Scotland, right? Right. I mean, how many are in Lowlands? At least single malt was distilled. Like, like three, like two or yeah. three. Yeah. <laughs> so, Operating. Um, there are some grain and sit down there, but yeah. yeah. Right. So the SWA actually classifies the islands as, as a Highland. So. Um, we're going to go with uh, with their definition, five regions tonight, okay? okay. okay? So the dummies here, are, what we're going to do, what we want to try to find out, can you really taste the region? Can you pull that out? If I hand you a whiskey, can you, do you really know it's a highland? Can you tell it's a, a lowland? I mean, well, I mean, they're kind of like some, let's, let's just say major profiles of flavors, distilleries that are going to come out of different regions, right? right? This is like a stereotype. It kind of, it kind of is. You're right. Totally well, stereotype. I, I, I agree to you to a degree. Now, when you read what they, what the, 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 what they say, they should. So, like right here, it says the Highlands. Oh, notes of peat, honey, heather, uh, heather, and a much more robust, dry body. Okay, yeah, that's nice. I, I, I'll, sure. I'll agree with what you just sure. said. But I'll tell you what, guys, doing this for six years, I have a pretty good idea. If you hand me a Lowland. I think I'm pretty close to. I'm, I'm going to well, get it. Well, let's 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 Campbelltown. Go, let's, are you serious? If I hand you a Campbelltown, Campbell Campbell well, let's yeah, talk about it. There's only two distilleries. I think it's important to kind of <laughs> have to, to talk about those stereotypes in, in a yeah. sense to kind of go through them a little bit. Yeah. Right. So, so let's go through the stereotypes. So you've got you. So Drew is showing us a, a, a post from BespokePost.com and the distinctive flavors of uh, right. like Scotland's five Scotch regions. That's kind of what we're using as as our rough our so, stereotype our, our arrangement today. Yep. Right. So let's go through what do we have, what are we showing here? This is space side. Okay, it's space side. So predominant flavor of the space side varies. Okay. They all vary. But generally smoky and deeply complex with hints of apple, nutmeg, and vanilla. And I agree with that. I Generally I totally smoky? Agree with that. Not not smoky, but the vanilla, nutmeg, space and Space sides and have fruits. smoky flavor? I think that's I don't, I don't right. think smoky right. So right. above that, though, it says space side side, lighter, grassier numbers to the sweeter, richer, sherry. To, okay, so they're talking about the... That's another problem when, when we talk about this is you got how many distillers did you say in a is, million? You're right, there's a lot. <laughs> Let's say there's <laughs> like, sixty distillers. More than in space seven. Side. Yeah. And that's a that's huge a range. Huge. And, and Especially they are if you want to throw some, some peat in, you want to throw some sherry in, you know, I mean Yeah, and so they're notable distillers, Johnny Walker. Well, that's not really a yeah, distillery. Yeah, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. That's not even a distillery. Glenn Livet and Glenn Fittig. And those two those okay. are and, and Glenn Mo Glenn Mongey, McCallan, you know, oh no, Glenn Moe's it's a Highland. It's um, a Highland. Highland. But so, I mean, but 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 I think when so when I say when I say space side to you, what do you come up with? Forget this. This is just a ballpark to get. I I generally think richer, fruitier, fruitier, yeah. spice and, and a lot spices. more sherried whiskeys come out of there. Yeah, I think I more all like. spice and, and nutmeg and vanillas and those come yeah. out to me more of the space sides whereas, in general. Whereas in general, Highlands yeah. in general, I think lighter, floral, yes, heavier, in general, heather, yeah. Right. Sometimes some like foresty. So what notes. what do they say about the maybe little, a little bit more? What do they say about the I don't know. Yeah. Prominent flavors in a highland, um, <laughs> because of just how large this area, uh, the amount of variation is huge. But you can generally expect bold, heather, and dried fruit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, pretty, it's pretty basic. Yeah. yeah. Wolfburn. Yeah. Well, that's I that Nevis one turret, but I mean, yeah. Okay. That's just what they're so, picking out, but I mean, the I, the one point that I will agree with them is because it's such a large region. You are gonna, you've got some that's inland and some that, and I'm sorry, coastal's gonna be different. Coastal. Well, and the islands are gonna be different. Right. Co you know. Well, let's keep with our, let's keep with our okay. meal here. So the lowlands, okay. Sean. What do you think about the lowlands? So I've only had a couple, and only a couple to choose from. Yeah. Um, I really like Rosebank. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can tell you that. Uh, <laughs> I really, I really am not a huge Akintoshin fan, but uh, I we got one here. I've had so the couple Lowlands that I have had. Yeah, Blood Knock. That was good. yeah. I Blood Knock like was Blood good. Um, I I don't know that I've had enough to really give it's you hard uh, to, the, the profile. Yeah, because I mean, like the Rose Bank was sweeter and like like honeyed, like super almost cleanly sweet. Um, well, they're saying, so they're saying sweeter notes, toffee, and cinnamon. So sweeter grass, notes, like grassy. Yeah, that's I'll, my I'll problem. With, is you get a lot of grassiness in there, yeah. which is not I'll my favorite flavor. Coffee. So the other one, which is your wheelhouse, Zyla. So they're yeah. they what they say. Although they don't sound appetizing, the mixture of brine, sea wood, smoke, salt, and distinctive flavors, intense flavors. Yep, that's what I like. It's, uh, it's that, an that's acquired taste. Spot on. So you know, you get your sure. Argor, your I mean, Lagavulin, and Lafroy. A few Bola. outliers, though. I mean, you've got a non-heated distiller out there, got, right? Exactly. So, yeah, we've got then, a couple more coming online. And, and then, and then finally, sure. there's Campbelltown. That Campbelltown, which is a whole different. The world funk. itself. It's a funkiness, right? It's a, I like what he said. Flavor of a wet dog are also called wet wool. I'm like, that's interesting. <laughs> but of a so wet Glen Scotia, dog. Spring Blank, Glen Gyle. Yeah, those are, When's the last time you licked your wet dog? Like funky, barbecued dog funky hair. Ah. Barbecued dog hair. <laughs> but good stuff. So let's let's talk about real quick, guys. So let's. you've got some bottles here that you've put out. And we let's do. talk we're about crazy to regional wise. How, how do these, these are kind of some bottles that we had that are kind of regional, right? So you, what are you starting off with? Well, so we got Royal Brockland, Old Pulteney. Those are Highlands. So okay. you're, you're going to get, now I know for a fact that Old Pulteney is more malty, a little bit of sea salt yep. because of right. the coastal That's effect. Coastal Absolutely. Influence. Right. And, but the Highland is massive. So right. you're, you're going to get some of that, but you're going to get all kinds of other things. Heather, I think, is a, probably a good all. I think so. Purposing Floral. word for it. Yeah. Right. Floral. Now, technically, technically, though, we've got. Highland Parks are technically part of that. That's correct. The Orkney Islands, islands, but... According to the SWA, there's not a region called Islands. It's part of yeah. the Highlands. So, <laughs> so one, one uh, speaking of going to buy stuff, when you go to most liquor stores, they don't do a, de- a good job of really kind of separating out by regions, but Total no. Wine is amazing for doing that. They actually really? go in, Yeah, when you go in there, they have it by region. Well, Cable they have towns. enough of a selection to be true. able to do it that way. Find a Table used to do that, I remember. I Did don't they? know if they, I think they've changed it now, yeah. but it, they used to. Um, Since cool as ours. But it, Highlands, I think, are probably the, the biggest variety because of the, the range, because of the size and, and, you know, of the geographic location. Because you got to think, think about the, the difference between up there at Wolfburn, at the very top, all the way down and come, you know, 200 miles south. It, it's, a, it's a, there's a difference Their personality there. is what they are. Right. So then these are the highlands that we've got represented tonight. We've got a couple of highland parks, a Royal Brackla, and an Old Poland 17. All right. You got a lowland next. Our our one and uh, no, our one That's and only side. lowland side, yeah. is the Akintoshin that we had. That's a, what is that? Was that triple? Yeah, this is the three wood. Three wood. Um, I left my rose back at home. You did? Damn it. I'll go get it. <laughs> I bet you will. <laughs> oh, here, I'll be right now. now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go over barefoot to get that one, brother. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so we only had one one lowland to uh, to pour tonight. So that's what, what we got here. No big deal. Occupy I guess we'll figure that one out. Maybe. Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. Um, Depends what you okay, pour. Let's pull. Then the, we get Campbelltown here. We got a couple Campbelltowns. We got a Hazelburn and a Springbank. Came from the same distillery, technically, right? Yep. A um, little bit subtle differences, though. What's the difference between Springbank and Hazelburn? That has to do with the number of distillates. You know what else we could throw in the there? The Hazelburn, Hazelburn triple distilled? That's going to be and, pretty uh, obvious. No, spring is two and a half times but distilled. Technically, Hazelburn we won't drink it, but technically that's also a And Hazelburn is um, non-peated, whereas Long Rose peated, right? Yes. Long Rose yeah. peated, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's another. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, hey. I'll, I'll bring some of that. <laughs> I want to try that. You don't have to choose. I want to try that. Three Campbelltowns. Um, now let's go into some space, right? We got two here. I just picked that real quickly. A yes. couple of quick space sides. I mean, obviously McKellen. Everybody knows what that is, yeah. right? And then Glen Alfie, right? Which one? What is this? Is this a 12? 15, year? I think. Is this a 15? I think it is. That's a UK Well, anomaly. you dog. It is a 15. I know. I kind of want to try that. Hello, <laughs> um, so a couple of, of highlands. Mm-hmm. Right. That's what I'm talking about. Because we got... And no, then we've space got sides. Space sides. This is this this is the islands down here. So what we got here? We got uh, a Kilhoman. 
Excellent. You got an Erd bag and a Buddha hobby. Over here too. So oh, Jura, yeah. So we've got we've got all the regions represented here, and what we what we wanted to do was is kind of talk about these, and maybe have you MC a little bit to kind of remind us of flavors, but. Why don't you guys switch all spots? Right. All right, we're gonna do this. We're gonna we're gonna mess with the dummies, guys. I don't know how to sit in front. Uh, where'd my glass go, man? Right here. There. Um, all right, so why all don't right, we do this? Right. So for fun, why don't you pour a glass of something, and let's start picking it apart a little bit, and then we'll ask a couple questions. We'll make it short, not too long, and start, see if we can narrow it down to the region, and then we'll maybe guess what it is. All right. Keep it simple. Sound good? Deal. So you guys all. Right. all so we'll, away. we'll talk amongst ourselves. Um, so are we just do doing that? one region at a time? One region at a time. Okay. Right. But we have to be fairly right. quick about it. So we're going to do two different regions. Yeah. Right? So right. now hang two. on a second. What? I'm, I'm right, for right now, I'm going to pour one glass for each of you. And it's going to be the same bottle. Correct. Right. And it's going to be and one. We're going to pick a region. We're gonna, we're yeah, gonna well, you can use our same glasses if you want. Cool, cool. All right, so, whatever, man. So uh, well, I'm not going to pay attention to what he's pouring, but what I will say is I don't think that the terroir is, is this really your glass right that here? important. There's, yeah. Yeah. It's really that important That's you? because... That's me. That's Sean. That's Sean. Yep. Oh. All right. Pour it up. Oh, yeah. Now, now yeah, you yeah, can I info... You. No, I, I took the coin off of yours, but I got it. Face All right. forward. All right. <laughs> I will say you can influence the flavor of whiskey by changing the grain Hang on a or second. by changing certain things in there. But I will not say that. You just hold your horses there. But you can show. I could tell a viewers. Highland from a Speyside just by saying. picking a random bottle. I mean, it's pretty obvious, right, that it's an Isla that's going to be sticking out. Well, not necessarily, because you got because you got Pete Week from Balvini. That's true. I mean, if if you wanna if you wanna mess things up, mess things yeah. up, the, mess up the stereotype, it's very easy to do. They they'll they'll buy special grains that were. Grown in uh, outside of Scotland, or they'll, you know, they'll uh, peat their, yeah. uh, they'll peat dry their yeah. smoke, you know. So, so, I guess I mean we're we're talking about terroir or however the hell you say it, right? Terrier. So terrier. Terrier. So I guess my question is, how much of where the grain is grown actually chat. influences? <laughs> you know, that oh yeah, versus, don't show anything in the chat, guys. Versus. You know where it's aged, the kind of casking that it's in, how tall the still is. So what do you got? And, and kind of what what style of whiskey is produced in the area that you're going to? I think that's the bigger deal. What style of whiskey does that distiller want to make today? Okay, I was I was going to use personality. I was going to say the same thing. So the, yeah. the, the distillery's personality, I think, is what we come to know more than actual terroir. I think that's right, and 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 but yet a, a distillery can still absolutely pineapple, change their uh, um, pineapple, their flavor. pineapple fr like fruit, sweet on the nose. This sweet honey honeycomb. Oh, it had it had a little smoke and funk to it. I'm getting a little. I didn't rinse your glass out, so I don't know what you had in there before. Uh, water. Okay. I, I there you go. Really well okay, good. I, that's interesting. That's an interesting note that you're pulling then. Oh, that's funky. Yeah, so that's that's a Campbelltown. Yeah, for sure. No doubt. I would agree. Um, I don't know which one, but I was I would say probably Hazelburn because of the smoke. It's I mean, got the a, heat. Yeah, it's like a a uh, like a toffee peanut brittle kind of thing going on. Peanut on the, brittle <laughs> on the mid palate. Mm -hmm. Left over from last year's school drive. <laughs> Exactly. It's from Every cats. show, a movie quote. <laughs> Every uh, show, <laughs> and it's got a nice like spice on the finish. I mean, I I, I really like Cameltown. Like a like a cinnamon and white pepper, Tom. <laughs> that could be a spring bank too, but I think it's Hazelburn. But I don't, I don't know, I don't know that well to pick him apart yet. But the the fact of the matter is, what without a doubt, it's a Campbell. Why? Yeah, I agree. The funkiness. Yeah, and th that is. That, it's, a, exactly. it's, it's a funkiness. So what we call uh, kind of like a, a sourness, or especially in the on the late wet, palate wet finish, <laughs> a wet <laughs> wool. Wet wool. Yeah. Is that terroir or is that distillery personality? That's distillery personality. I think it's distillery personality. Well, distillery character. Because it's by it's design, just, they want. Because their... the other thing that you have to take into consideration is like when you make wine, all of the juice from the grape goes into making the wine. Correct. For the whiskey. They're 
they are making a conscious decision of where to cut That's the heads too. and the tails, and so thereby they're influencing. That's true. What what the well, final product is. And, taste and when like. I say personality yeah. distillery, that goes into the size of their still. They, there's a conscious decision that they're using this particular yeah. still, and their their process mm. is running it this way because this they one. want a specific flavor <laughs> to come out of that. Well, now I do say that you know the scientific study they use the same still. Different True. grains, different years, because they wanted to see, is, is there an influence? Right, they, and so I think that in that respect, it is good research, right? <laughs> like, because if I'm a master distiller, I, I want to know, you know, if I'm getting grain from a specific location, it's more likely to impart that apple or pear note versus like a toasted almond or, you know, some other note that... You know, I really want that apple. Yeah. And and so this gives me a better chance of having that be a predominant flavor that comes through. Right. Yeah. I mean, ter terroir absolutely does Forest. have a you difference because, or, I mean, terroir doesn't. Terroir affects the grain because whether it's, you know, too hot or too cold, it's going to affect the protein content, the sugar content of the whiskey. It's going to affect your alcohol yield. It's going to affect the performance of the yeast. And if the yeast die early, then you get a lot more esters and a lot more different flavors than if the if the yeast live a long time because there's plenty of sugar in there. And so all that yeah. all that accounts. Now is that terroir? Maybe. I mean, you know, part of it could be because grapes are the same deal. You yeah. know, I mean, the yeast strain yeah. and the type of the grape and how much moisture content but, and you know when they harvest. And so I would say affected. grain is more of a. A tool that a master distiller, master blender, master, um, yeah, you know, I guess master distiller would have in the toolbox. You've got yeast, you've got grain, you've got fermentation time, you've got boil uh, still shape, you've got uh, distillation speed, you've got line arm tool or ingredient. It's it's a tool you can use because if I want if I want um, certain types of uh, barley will have more protein content, which will impart a different flavor than if I do a, a really high sweet grain. So I can use that to change the whiskey right. that I produce. And another thing that, that, that confuses this is terroir in, in the wine industry is, is very defined by, by a, a location. Yeah, absolutely. Very, and it's very regulated. It's very, you know, it's reserved. Yes. Where in the scotch industry, just because I happen to be located up on the Orkney Islands doesn't mean I'm using barley from the Orkney exactly. Islands. Exactly. I bought that stuff down there in, in England. Or, or, you know what I mean? So Diversity. it really blurs the line of whether well, there can be terroir. And with wine, I mean, so there are some very small wine regions. And they're like the north or the south slope of this hill is a region. Yeah, right. And, and even within that region... Year to year, you have very different wines. Yeah. From the same uh, wine house, from the same vines, you'll have a very different wine year one to year two. Hmm. If the weather's different. If it's Versus more wet or drier or whatever. The whiskey, I think there there is some variation that creeps in because of, you know, maybe Protein you switched up the kind of barley that you're using. Yeah. You're using a new strain now. And so that affects it slightly. And you know maybe you've got you know you've got 20 farms that you're buying grain from, but you're you know at the end of the, the day you're mixing it all together, right? <laughs> exactly. So so how much of that? Unless you're being very specific about it, and I'm going to distill today from this farm using that grain, how much of that actually gets into well, your glass? Yep. And you know, we talked about grain over you know like you said, and when you were talking about. The things that influence and kind of overpaint. I was I was imagining like a painter. You know, I can paint a stroke on an, on a on a canvas, and then all of a sudden you come in with some more paint and you slap all over top of it. And you come and slap. Can you really still see the original lines that I paint? <laughs> no, you can't. Well, think about it in Isla, right? So I'm gonna go get. The, I'm gonna go out of my way to get the specific barley from the specific area, and I'm gonna say that it matters. And then I'm gonna dry it with some peat. I'm gonna smoke the hell <laughs> I'm gonna out smoke of it. the hell out of it, right? Are you really gonna be able to tell where that barley came from? I does it I mean I to me you really came and slept over it. I, I'm with you, Andrew. I think it's it's one item in a long chain yes. to get the whiskey into the bottle. And so what what I've seen with, with distilleries that are trying to do terroir, like um, the Springbank local barley, where they're trying to specifically target this is made from barley where we 
were in, from Campbelltown. Right. What they do is they, they remove all that other garbage. Right. And, they, and I'm cool with that. They focus exclusively as much as they can on what that barley can produce. And that's, again, a tool you're using. You're taking off all the sherry cask. You're taking off all these, all these other things that can influence that flavor and highlighting that specific deal. It's like the Glenmorangia Star. Yeah. That is highlighting the barrel All that right. they're using for Turn around, man. Turn around, guys. Right. Turn around. We're gonna get going. Yeah, so, we have, oh, one more? Okay. Yeah, we're going to do another one here. I'm going to grab oh, this. Oh, so, don't, don't look at the screen. <laughs> yeah, don't look at the screen, man. All right, so, so I can't so look, turn around and I can't look at me. What are we doing? Uh, what's wrong right. with the screen? So, oh, hold on. Let me, let me we're do this. looking at Mark. We're looking at Mark. Here, how, about, how, about, how about this? Yeah. yeah there we go. Thanks. Right. So. Oh, my I totally gosh, lost my job. Yeah, so, right. okay, so let's let's take the the Springbank local barley as an example. Mm -hmm. So this one they specifically uh, focused in on the barley. Yes. How much variation do you think you would get if if more distilleries focused in year to year on hey you know this this bottle is from you know Mr. McGregor's farm down the street. And we're using his barley every year for this particular bottling. It's going to be aged 12 years in these casks, and everything is going to be the same about this. Okay. Do you so, think that there would be a little more variation, and we just don't see it because they're buying go. bulk grain, it's getting mashed, and go. it's all kind of mixed together, so that takes some of that out, out of there. Yes, when you look at the study that we talked about from, from Waterford, um, their biggest influence was location and year. And so if you were to take, if you were to produce a local barley nine every year, and you used really dead casks, and you um, were very specific about, this is Bob's farm this year, I and this is Joe's farm on the other part of an island next year, and it's a different year and a different location, okay, but, but even a different type of enough. grain, I think you could taste that. Because essentially That's you're, nice. Your new make is a is a heavier influence in the Where's flavor than in most other scotches where you put a heavy barrel influence into it and it sits for fifty years. Okay. So that that oh, if you took well, a I young essentially a young whiskey in a dead cask, you you highlight the new make more. And that's I think you could taste the flavor. Man, this forever, dude. So I mean it's a it's a question of the well, distiller yeah. wanting to do that. But Absolutely. They've got to intentionally mute the other influencers of whiskey. All right, guys. What are you getting in those? Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> is this Canadian whiskey? This is, this is like um, Heather. Like there, There's a real light sweet It smells note. like a Highland. I mean, because I smell like floral and sweet. There's a, there's a weird tangy. So is Heather like better than Esther? No, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, we don't like to compare. We don't like to compare. <laughs> Usually causes fights. <laughs> Honeycomb on the nose. All right, give me some. Give me some notes here, Andrew. Yeah, a little bit of linen. A little. Uh, I, um, I got a little bit of honey on it, but my first, my first palate was a little bit of acid, acetone, but then that disappeared very quickly, and it, it became more. Um, Drying. Working on it, block linger. I don't have the taste back, but mm. I did smell mm. something today. I smelled some perfume. I thought, I, so when I first hit the nose on this, I was not too impressed, but it, it's actually, after I've tasted it, it's, it's, got it's a, really subtle. It's got a decent aftertaste, too. Like, a, a finish, the finish is kind of um, uh, concentrated mm. sugar and, 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 and caramel. Honestly, I'm not getting much on this one. I, I, there's, mm. like, some subtle apple... It's There's like a, a hot toffee thing. Yeah. Um, Apple cider almost. So you said a region at least. What do you guys think? I think it's an island. What, what, I mean, an island? A highland. Island. Yeah. Yeah, we're sticking to the five. So no island. If it's an island, it's a highland. Yes, it is a highland because it's light and subtle and. Uh, so can you, so it, if you're doing blind lost. tastings, can, I mean. And obviously, we're cheating a little bit because we have the bottles we're right, no looking through. Right, it's not quite through. blind. But I, I think, you know, I, when we do blinds, we try to put some of these things we're talking about in perspective. It's easier to call them out now based on what we're having, but I think it's still true to point when you're doing a blind, if you think about some of these major points we're making on the regions, I think they'll steer you at least, for the most part, 
excited for those one-off weirdos, you know. Which that, they're there. They're definitely there. But it's going to give you at least in the same I mean, area. It, it's a stereotype for a reason, right? Correct. Because a, a lot of them fall within that range. Well, so what do we so, have? It's not. It's definitely not Old Pulteney. I don't um, remember. Broccoli, I remember being kind of a little malty, but basic as hell. Um, definitely not Highland Park. Definitely good. not Highland Park. It's got to be Jura. That's it, right? Well, those are your choices. Those are the five highlands that it's we've a, got. It's, it's got to be the Jura. It's either the Jura or the Broccula. That's, uh, I'm, I'm going to say the, whatever it is. Broccula. Broccula. I don't remember. Broccula. Broccula. I don't remember. Drink. We Scottish. haven't had this yet. We just got this. The Jura 7 way. I don't remember that. We, we have we no review on it yet. yet. Or have we? Mm -mm. <laughs> we may have now. Yeah, is it open? It's, right. it's, I'm going to say Jura. This is, yeah, this is, I don't think it's Highland Park, but. I remember having it's this good. and not being very impressed. I'm just be, not though. getting a whole lot off of it. I'm getting brown sugar on the nose now. I'm gonna, I'm There's gonna, brown sugar okay, on the palate. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of credit for that, Sean. I, and why I say that is because it is the Highland Park 12, and that's a dead bottle. Really? So you're saying you're not getting out, in much out of it? How long has this thing been opened, and how much is left? There's a heel. So, all right, that's a fair yeah. assessment. I would you know not, what? I guess, Highland Park. I give that I'm to you. I'm getting smoky myself at all. Yeah, it's really low PPM. I, you there. know no, what? Yeah. Honestly, I never get smoky out of Highland Park's. It's I mean, uh, they're low. low. I, I mean, really, yeah. they intentionally very but, subtly. But I normally get Heather out of you Highland did Park. You say Heather. I didn't it is Heather. It still that. has Heather. But it's got, yeah. a, it's got a caramel finish to it. But I mean, I, I don't remember Highland Park enough to call it out. But I mean, I, I thought I would think more, a little bit more Pete in them. I don't get any of that. I think what, what, what I learn out of this, instead of saying the word terroir, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't fight to, to, to defend that. I would say there are personalities out of the regions that that I, I don't even want to use the word stereotype it I mean I've, I've I believe them I've, I've tasted them I know that there are certain personality traits that come out of each region and, and sure. then there's more personality that come out of every distillery right I that's how you really start dialing and you're like and hey, you know what that's a McKellen how do I know because I got that sulfur that's a McKellen. Yeah. but I, I don't I don't necessarily buy into the terroir Argument. I don't either, personally. I, I think I, it's more flavor profile. Based I think that there's story. probably something. Like, I'll, I'll believe the science, you know? I, I think that there's probably some subtle differences. I just don't know how much it contributes to the final well taste and aroma. Essentially, a 12. grain can influence your flavor, I which is essentially what they said. Open. But is that make it a space site? Right. No, because no, the space side not. pulls our grain from all over the world. Right. They don't, right. There's no way you could grow enough grain. I don't space think. Side I, to, I to think there's them. a very small. I think it's a very unique area of terroir being kind of unique, or specific yeah. to the taste. I think yeah. for the most part, it's uh, not. It'll included. be interesting to see if there are distilleries that go all in for it, right? Like, and not necessarily every bottling, but maybe they have a line that. That they do say, hey, it's from McGregor's farm down the street, Brooklyn, and this is our thing, right? right? You know, and that's fair. I I, I respect that too. Um, yeah. I, so I, I I think it would be interesting just to see how much it would contribute. I I honestly don't know. I I'm so, gonna be interested to see how this the next paper, the next study comes out. Yep. Follow that line. But at the end of the day, right now, I I don't necessarily buy into either. it, especially with so many variables. Mm -hmm. Wood influence, maturation. I mean, look, let's let's just think I, about the the chemical stuff they're doing, the the chemistry, all trying to do non NES stuff now versus age, just to get it up to the quality level. I mean, how is Terroir really going to play that kind of delicateness to it? Mm -hmm. It's not. It's I, not. I'm not. I'm not buying it. So yeah. we got two regions left. I'm not sure that we necessarily need to try them. These are going to be obviously. Well, I mean, I'm gonna maybe not. Maybe not. To be, I'm you want to do one more? Some, I'm gonna try some. I'm out. I'll do one more if you guys. Want I got to. three more glasses that are clean for you boys. Okay. You guys want to do one more? I don't care, man. Sure, why not? Let's do one more. One more. We're running. Talk amongst yourselves. We're running a little Talk amongst, amongst yourselves. Right. Right. I'm getting all for clamped kind of over here. Yeah. Oh so, my gosh. So, Brooklady does dry hard. Yeah, they do. There's a lot of I can't really talk too much because the microphone's not over here. But there's a lot of little one-off distilleries, right? That try to trick people. Well, and, and, and that's, I think you, you will get, and, and to Mark's point, you'll get more influence based on a distillery because of what the distillery is trying to do 
rather than where the distillery is located. Right. And so I think that is what you want to be you really focus on. If you like a distillery, keep in mind, 50% of that flavor is purely from their from the right, stills. The rest is from their... Okay, that's going to be pretty obvious. It's dark. Whoa. Well, I didn't go too obvious well, because I, you don't smell a bunch of peat on it, well, do you? Well, no, I don't. I'm not going <laughs> to speak because I saw him place the bottle. So I'm not, I, I, will, I will give nosy tasting notes, but I'm not going to pick a bottle. I'm trying not to look at the color. I'm going to cheat. I'm a little envious. I'd pour myself a I mean, glass this of this is, one. This smells but, uh, nice. The fact that I can't smell or taste anything, it would just be a waste. <laughs> While they're doing this, I'll tell you guys, as I'm trying to get my smell and taste back, I was telling Sean and, and Drew earlier that I find myself anymore tasting my food out of memory. In other words, I know how something is supposed to taste, and I'll be eating it to the point where I'll even say, God, this is good, and I know I can't even taste it, but in my mind, I know how good it's supposed to be, so that's what I'm You're enjoying. You're matrix, matrixing it. Yeah, like the guy in a matrix, you know, yeah. I know this steak is fake. That's <laughs> right, that's exactly it. <laughs> but, this is not steak, but I'm out. <laughs> it tastes so, so good, the, red, yeah. the bloody, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So this has like deep cherries in it. It's, it's a tasty whiskey. That's good. It's yeah, like chocolate covered cherries and you know, I love Christmas the color. Spice. I love. I mean, look at the color in that glass that you're holding. It's beautiful. Man, that's dark. It's, it's just a beautiful color. Cherry, like and just. It just to me, it looks like maple syrup. Or, I mean, concentrated it's beautiful. cherry and mm. syrupy. No spiciness though in the nose. No, but it's got it on the palate. Yeah, is the ABV high on this? Do you know? Don't know. Don't can't look at the bottle right okay. now. That's really nice. I mean, the finish goes on forever. I've got a drop of water on the ABV that is high. Yeah, a little bit high. Um, that's delicious. What do you got in the palate? So I, I mean, it it is chocolate covered cherries and it's really? got Christmas spice. Long finish. There's a there's like a uh, Christmas spice. A, a sugary. Like a dark sugar caramel, like a really dark, intense sugar, um, almost like a, a rich maple syrup kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and long, the mouth, long, nice long finish. Um, I mean, it's it's a really nice glass. Yeah, it's weird because the the I mean, it, it tastes it might be fairly sweet on the initial palate, but when the fin when I let the finish go, it's like pure. Um, Dark chocolate, like like eighty five percent cacao kind of dark chocolate. Wow. Very little butterfat, very little sweetness. Yeah. Just dry. Mm. <laughs> you know what it is, Andrew? No. You said you weren't gonna guess bottle. Well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ask. Oh, did you know it was this one? No. No. I didn't, but. Uh, it's a Glen Alki. I, I um, figured it tasted it was a like it, and it wasn't a mechanic. I mean, I knew so. it wasn't this one. I didn't try it. So fifty-six point seven is the ABV you were That's asking really nice. earlier. So it's high. Um, it's yeah. I mean, I was kind of I was stymied, guys. I I wanted to yeah. You know, if I I know if I go here. That's a dead giveaway. You guys are gonna nail this in a heartbeat. Over here, these two, are, these two are giving away. You could have went the Highland. It's a screw. Up I know, a but I. I also heard Sean make a comment that, oh, I'm dry one. And I'm like, you know, I do too, but since I can't, they should, you know, why it's, can't they? So, so it's, a one? it's not, it's not no, a no, sherry it's bomb, right. it's, it's but it's, it's, it's a unique concentrated sugar, cherry, syrupy bomb with it's really kind nice. of a cool aftertaste too, actually. Yep. So what so. is the Glen Alki 2004 single cask? <clears throat> All the world's are punching. I, I don't remember where that one came from. Um, it's delicious. I mean, I it's think really I bought, good. I think I bought one, and what I was, I was ordering it, Drew said, jumped out, give me one of those. <laughs> and I had picked it up yeah, um, it on recommendation yeah. of, cool. I can't yeah. even think of his name right now. Um, Travis? Travis, Faircloth, thank you. Yeah, uh, Travis I haven't talked to Travis. I haven't seen Travis in a long time, to be honest with you. I'll call him out tonight. I haven't seen You're him. I, I need to check with him. I, I mean, I'm not on Facebook anymore, so I don't, I don't get a chance to check in with him. Um, it's good. We're, we are way past it's good. Our, our time normally. We are but it's been fun, but it, you know it's it's inter interesting topic. Regionals by Scotch. I mean, there's there's some 
some kind of basics, I guess, in a sense, yeah. that you can go to. But it's it's kind of a cool th thing to, th to think about, you know, where you want to go. And I, I really encourage liquor stores to kind of break them apart like that. I think it's really neat to be like, you know, I'm going to try this region. And because, I mean, a lot of people don't really go in to buy scotch at first that way. They just go, hmm, I I've heard of this. this distillery. I've heard of McAllen. Or there's a bunch of these on the shelf. It must be okay. It must be good. Well, and, and I honestly, I, I, I don't want to say a challenge, but I, I think that everyone should try to take more, pay more attention to region. Yes. Pay, and you will start See, seeing. I'm just saying you don't need to because no, it's not about the region. I, about but the, I'm, the personality, the, 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 the general tone of that the, the region comes out, and, and it, I it, think. It's good to level set yourself in a sense, to at least have an appreciation for the, the regions because there's so much environmental that goes into those regions for me that play into the distillery, to your point. Hmm. Like, talk about Orkney, right? And, and yeah, but that's Holy. Island. I know, but I mean, different <laughs> places. Totally different. Islands different. and the different pizza, pizza that. So, so yeah, so I, I think the region of it's where the region. whiskey is made does influence it. So if you're on an island or if you're coastal or if you're you know, mainland or inland, I think those do have, do have an effect, especially where, where it's aged and finished and things like that. So. But I don't know if if I pick a Highland, that's going to tell me anything. I think it gives you a pretty good general. Uh, th there is a general definition of, of an expectation of, of flavor. I mean, yes, there's outliers. There's outliers in anything. Yeah. I mean, heck, this this is an island. There ain't no there ain't no peat in there, right? Nope. But uh, I get it. But I think for there are general tasting and, and expectations out of a region, right? I, At least I think I've learned in five and a half years. The smaller the region, years. the more that applies. So, like Islas, Campbelltown. Sure. Yes. So let's work quickly. Highland, maybe not as much. <laughs> the interesting thing is, let's talk about the future of Scotch and whiskeys in general. We, we're talking regional based on, yep. especially especially twenty years ago, it was a lot more firm. Correct, because they weren't sure. experimenting as much. Today, yes. with technology and everything else. There's a yeah. lot more gray now in regions than there ever has been. That I would agree. Uh, especially now you've got malting houses, big bar, you know what I mean? Huge houses. That there's no supply. there's no issues with, with you know logistics and things like that. Right. You get malt, malt, yep. malted yep. barley, et cetera. So. Yeah. All right, guys. Fun show tonight. Good, yeah, good show. Absolutely. Um, we still have not put down a date. That we are going to do We're Sunday gonna, lives. Soon, We're working very towards soon. them. It's Before a matter figure that out. of of us figuring that out and logistically putting That's it down. That's more figure it out. I like it. <laughs> Probably in the very, very Good. near future, would you say? <laughs> I would say in the very, very near future. We need so to make it happen. Very few Thursdays left. Four weeks? Probably. Yeah. So I, would, I would say by March. And that's oh, just around the yeah. corner, that's for sure. Yeah. So, Two weeks so to all of our folks down south that are struggling in the cold, keep warm. We're with you because we're cold too. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, no more shoveling. It should taste the same even though it may be a little cloudy. <laughs> it should taste Says the same. Says that doctor guy. Cheers, guys. Cheers, we'll guys. see you next Fun time. Time. Slash.